Hi and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at servicing a rotary tank style dress watch with a 17 joule Swiss movement. Here I'm giving the watch a full wind and we'll take a look at the movement once it's uncased. Here you see the solid steel case back. Which incorporates the movement holder ring. And here the movement. At this point I'm using a blower to agitate the balance wheel and you can see that it swings very briefly and stops it won't it won't continue to run and this is on a full wind so it's definitely in need of a service just down there you can see some rubbing on the hour hand and there is a slight bend on the minute hand which will need to be corrected on reassembly Here I'm removing the hands using a sheet of plastic to protect the dial and a pair of hand lifting levers. And the next step is to unscrew the two dial screws which hold the dial in place to the movement. On the front of the dial are some numbers engraved, uh, 486, which is possibly when the movement was last serviced or last uh, inspected, uh, maybe April 1986 perhaps. We begin stripping the movement with removal of the keyless works. There are no date complications or anything else on this watch, it's a very straightforward movement. The cover plate for the keyless works is retained by two screws. And once this is removed, this allows us access to the yoke, the setting lever, the setting lever spring, the hour wheel, the minute wheel, the cannon pinion, and the intermediate wheel.
With the stem removed, we can remove the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. And then the cannon pinion. With the front stripped we move on to the rear side of the watch and begin by removing the balance cock. The power has already been removed from the train. Here we're removing the crown wheel which is a left handed thread. Followed by the ratchet wheel. Underneath this is a combined click and click spring. Next to remove is the combined barrel and train bridge, which is held down by three screws. And with the train and centre wheel bridge removed, we then have access to the fourth wheel, third wheel, centre wheel and the escape wheel. And of course the mainspring barrel.
while the watch looks reasonably clean there are on close inspection remnants of old gummed up oil and it's obviously been some time since it was last cleaned and serviced and uh, this is the reason for the movement slowing and stopping here I'm removing the pallet cock and pallet fork And finally, the escape wheel. At this point here, I'm refitting the balance cock in preparation for placing into the watch cleaning machine. This minimizes the possibility of damage to the hairspring, which of course is a very delicate part. and I give that a little shake just to make sure that the pivots are located properly and that the balance wheel is free before screwing this down securely and the final part of this assembly is the mainspring barrel so we've popped the cap loose using a poly bag just in case any parts ping. Remove the lid of the balance, uh, the mainspring barrel, apologies, and then the barrel arbor. Barrel and mainspring are actually incredibly clean inside. And then here I'm walking out the mainspring using my thumbnails. At this point all of the parts are put into the basket and then go into the watch cleaning machine. They go into the cleaner first and that is left to spin for approximately 15 minutes. I will be doing another video specifically on the watch cleaner. This, is, uh, this watch cleaning machine is something new to me. Previously I've always cleaned by hand and the results with the machine are much much better um, so I will be doing another video on the use of the watch cleaning machine this particular one is a national model one which is made by a company called Lanzetters of Manchester and this particular machine is, uh, is approximately from 1958 and yet it uh, still remains exactly the same principle as watch cleaning machines that are used today. After the first wash you saw there it goes into a rinse for a, about 15 minutes and then into a second rinse for a further 15 minutes and then to a drying chamber. At this point we have the cleaned movements and parts and we begin reassembly. The mainspring is wound back into the barrel 
after lubricating the mainspring with uh, a thin coat of oil just to ensure that it's just enough to ensure that it's covered and protected and it's wound back into the barrel and refitted we then refit the train wheels fourth third and second or center wheel and then the escape wheel this then allows us to refit the train and barrel bridge all the lower pivot holes are oiled prior to fitting the components because these on this movement are designed in such a way that they have to be oiled internally whereas the ones on the top of the balance and train bridge can be oiled once that's in place. This part takes a little bit of jiggling and encouragement to make sure all the pivots are seated securely and you can see here once it's all seated I'm holding that in place with my finger while I just give the barrel a little push to test that before fitting the three screws that hold the bridge in place. Once that's secured, you just give that another push to make sure that everything's moving freely before refitting the combined click and click spring with a little grease applied to the back of the spring where it contacts the plate. And then the ratchet wheel and its retaining screw are fitted next. using a bit of pegwood there just to hold the ratchet wheel securely while I tighten the screw. Next to be fitted after greasing the pivot point is the crown wheel. Just cleaning up the excess grease there with a little dab of Rodico. And then refitting the screw, which as before is a left handed thread, so this must be tightened in a clockwise direction. My apologies, I said a clockwise direction there. I did, of course, mean an anti-clockwise direction. At this point, I am refitting the pallet uh, 
cock after refitting the pallet fork which unfortunately was obscured by my finger there, apologies for that. For the rebuild I am actually trying a different camera angle and this is a sort of face on and slightly above camera angle thinking it might give a better view but I'm not entirely sure that that's the case. It's very tricky actually finding an acceptable angle that shows everything that's going on without obscuring some of the work that occurs. Here I'm just testing the free movement of the pallet fork before I go ahead and tighten everything and then I add one full wind on the mainspring barrel a tiny drop of oil is applied to the exit pallet stone and then the pallet fork is manipulated to make sure that it oils each of the escape wheel teeth accordingly and to make sure that it drops adequately. Here's my favourite part of any rebuild and it's the refitting of the balance and this is um, a very satisfying part once you've refitted the balance and it begins to beat. This is the part that uh, I like because it shows that all the work that you've put in so far has achieved the desired result. And also it's nice to know that um, with the balance beating away you can secure down the balance cock in place and fit the screw and see immediately if there is any problem with regards to um, adequate clearance and such like and make sure that the pivots are fitted correctly. You'll notice at this point that the end stone of the balance cock was missing. Um, I, I removed the end stones and cleaned them separately after the, the watch movement has gone through the cleaning machine because the end stones help to keep the balance pivot in place securely while it's in the machine. And I did actually try to demonstrate the refitting of the shock spring, but unfortunately it was just too difficult to do that on camera because this is something that requires me getting very close up and uh, with a loop and seeing exactly what I'm doing whilst using two pairs of tweezers to refit it. After refitting the Chaton cap jewel and the balance shock spring to the rear, uh, you'll, uh, we turn the movement over to the dial side and the balance jewel on that side had already been cleaned and refitted prior to reassembling the motion works. Here we're refitting the keyless works. So after lubricating, we fit the winding pinion and the clutch and then place the winding stem into place. I then lubricate all of the pivot points for the setting lever, the yoke and then the associated springs and cover plates. Note also on this particular movement that in addition to the intermediate pinion the minute wheel needs to be fitted prior to fitting the securing plate as well. Here I'm refitting the yoke spring 
and this particular part of the process is a little fiddly and tricky so I'm holding the yoke and the spring in place with a piece of pegwood while I manipulate the tail of the spring into place to try and stop that pinging off Here I'm refitting the intermediate pinion and then the minute wheel. Followed by the cover securing plate for the keyless works. This is tacked into place with the two screws. And the spring portion is manipulated into place before finally tightening down the screws. I'm adding a little grease onto the contact point of the spring and then once that's put into place and the screws are fully tightened down this is manipulated back and forth a little to make sure that the relevant points are lubricated before clearing off any excess grease with a bit of Rodico and then the cannon pinion is refitted. The next step is to fit the hour wheel, but at this point I put the movement on the time grapher because the hour wheel is not held in place by anything. So I want to regulate and set the movement on the time grapher before I go ahead and refit the hour wheel and the dial. So we put the machine onto the time grapher and the initial trace looks like this with quite a large beat error of 5.1 milliseconds as you can see. So we go ahead and correct the beat error first of all. And once we've gotten that to a good reading of 0.1 milliseconds, we start looking at regulating the gain or loss, in this case a plus 30 seconds a day gain, until we get it to something a bit better, like this one here which is within sort of uh, plus three of mine to minus two seconds. Once I'm happy with that, I go ahead and refit the hour wheel. And at this point I'm just checking that everything moves as it should in the hand setting position, which it does. Next step is to refit the dial, which has been uh, 
cleaned up a little with a bit of Rodico. Uh, dial work is, is something you have to be very careful with and is a very specialist thing in its own right and the dial should never be attempted to be cleaned with anything aggressive at all because there are so many different finishes it's easy to damage them and here I'm refitting the hour hand followed by the minute hand after a little careful manipulation to straighten out the kink in it which is where it's uh, rubbed the paint on the hour hand in the past as you can see once these are refitted the gaps between them are checked and the movement is wound all the way around a couple of times to make sure that the hands are clearing each other adequately. The beauty of a movement like this of course is you only have to align the hour hand and minute hand to the 12 o'clock positions and you don't have to worry about the placing of the hour hands as the date changes. And here I'm recasing the movement using a dust blower to make sure that the case and the movement are free of dust. With the case back snapped into place, there is the service complete. The case has had a little polish and clean. And here next to it, this watch is a friend's dad's watch that's serviced. Next to it is his wife's watch, which needed the minute hand straightening also. But uh, thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful.